there are five tenets of a better argument that we actually uh, drew up in a uh, kind of an interim report, which you can find on our website for our, our program, the Citizenship and American Identity Program at the Aspen Institute. Uh, and if you just Google the Better Arguments Project, um, which our partners, again, at Allstate have really helped us shape because they've been doing work that's grounded in community, um, working with young people, working with uh, neighbors uh, who are trying to make, a sense, make sense of what it means to build a beloved community. So I'm going to name these, but they're going to be familiar to you because you all said them. Number one, take winning off the table. I forget who said that, right? But that, that's just literally one. And a variant of that is what the, the last comment was, which is identifying some shared goal of what we're trying to get out of this argument, right? Take winning off the table as a radical idea. Like, I'm arguing with you to understand, not necessarily to win, right? And as someone else said here, it is possible to be wrong in a way that doesn't have to mean the other person's right or vice versa, right? Um, number two, again, as was said by several of you, Prioritize relationships and listen passionately. The problem with political argument today in an age of, that is so mediated, either cable TV mediated or social media mediated, um, is that we, we have gotten habituated to penalty-free trashing of each other. There is no price you pay for flaming somebody in that intermediate mediated way. Right? But if you're in relationship with somebody, whether family, whether somebody you just met at the Aspen Ideas Festival, uh, something else, relationship holds you in a different space and a different context, which is the third takeaway here. Pay attention to context, right? There are debates that are going on in our country about, for instance, the enforcement of laws, right? So the argument for what's happening at the border is about the enforcement of laws, and the enforcement of laws matter. Yes, it does, but context matters also, right? And the context within which the discretion of officials at the border are making decisions matters in just the same way that the context, I was in Kansas, I was in uh, um, Atlanta over the weekend and happened to walk upon a traffic cop uh, going off on a guy, an African American guy who had a little ice cream cart which apparently didn't have a permit. And she was going off on him, yelling at him, berating him. And I just walked up her and said, ma'am, What's going on here? And she told me all the things he'd done wrong. It was the second time he told him that day he had to have the right permits and everything. She was, quote, right, right? This guy was in the wrong, quote. But I said to her, ma'am, you're the one with a gun and a badge. You don't have to raise your voice. <laughs> and, and that kind of hit, that broke the circuit for her, right? But it was remembering that in, in a, that context of how you actually are engaging around what seems to be a universal principle of obey the law, um, you have to take that into account. The fourth takeaway, embrace vulnerability. Literally, so just as, uh, as James was saying. Um, that, and again, this goes back to what C. Terry Warner was saying about accused to excuse. He finally says in that book, there's only one way to break the cycle of accused to excuse, and that is to break the cycle. It is to be the one that says, okay, I will be the grown-up. I will take responsibility, even though I didn't, quote, start it. Right? And every one of us can relate to that feeling of, I didn't start this. I'm not going to be the first one to extend the olive branch. Extend the olive branch. Right? Um, uh, th that embrace of vulnerability is huge. And then finally, our principle that we call make room to transform, but I think actually it can be captured this way, which is you cannot possibly change another person's mind unless you are willing to have your own mind changed. You may score points. You may be able to kind of rack up debater points. But you won't change their mind if they sense that you're not willing to have your mind changed. Uh, and that is a matter of uh, mindset, but also heart set. Uh, and I think ways in which these questions and these tenets uh, play out, take winning off the table, prioritize relationships, pay attention to context, embrace vulnerability, and make room for that kind of transformation of yourself. These are habits that, on the one hand, are not rocket science. And thank God, they're not rocket science. We can now all practice them in civic life, and we can make a different contagion of a different culture of argumentation.